Breaking right now, police say a man was shot while digging through trash near Cherry Creek this afternoon. It happened about 2.45 this afternoon on Cherry Street near Montview Boulevard. DPD describing the victim as homeless, saying that a security guard confronted him. The guard's dad became involved. Police say at one point the dad shot the victim in the foot. The father and son are being investigated. So far, they have not yet been arrested. Delivery services from the United States Postal Service just got a little longer for some and more expensive for everyone. Yeah, there are new delivery standards and pricing going into effect this weekend. And as Jalisa Irizarry explains, for some customers, might be the last straw. Outside of a post office, not a pretty nice day. Patience Warren. It is. It's incredibly frustrating. Has some not so nice things to say. Like it's just getting worse at this point. Warren is a United States Postal Service or USPS customer. She recently tracked a package that arrived a few days late. It said that it arrived in like the Denver network and then all of a sudden it was on its way to Seattle and then it was coming back to Denver and I was thinking like what if I was like, what if it was a prescription medication like insulin or something like that? I would have been completely out of luck. That's horrible. For months, post offices have struggled with delivery delays, but starting this weekend, some services are going to get even slower. This month, USPS will implement a new standard for first class mail. That means letters and packages traveling longer distances could take up to five days to arrive rather than the previously estimated two to three. On top of that, prices for shipping parcels are also temporarily increasing through the holiday season, so mailing gifts will cost you even more. I mean, honestly, it feels like sabotage. Like, it feels like they're trying to make us not want to use the USPS and go through, like, privatized companies. In a statement to Nine News, USPS says the slowdown in services is all part of a 10-year plan to try and make the post office financially stable. They say the changes will increase delivery reliability, consistency, and efficiency for customers across the country. Words this customer hopes holds true. Yes, please. As she ends this nice day with some nicer words. I love the USPS. I think that we should fund it so that it works efficiently. Jalisa Rosari, Nine News. Well, the Postal Service says the price increase is only temporary, but it's going to go through the holidays. They say they'll be going back to their old pricing on December 26th. Kitchen update, the containment on the Ptarmigan fire burning up in Summit County is up to now 25%. The Sheriff's Office said they'd hope to move faster, but that is steep terrain and it's making it difficult. The fire has not grown much in recent days. It is still listed as 86 acres in size. Trails and roads in that area will remain closed as the efforts continue. Several areas still remain under pre-evacuation orders. I happened to drive by the Ptarmigan fire today uh, on my way towards and? work today, and it's a beautiful day in the mountains with spectacular colors, as mm -hmm. you might know. Bet. And as you take a look at uh, downtown Denver, another blue sky day, beautiful day to uh, get out and watch some football or sit look there and look skies. at Ball Arena and know that pretty soon the hockey and basketball teams are going to be playing real games. Too. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all coming. <laughs> And the leaves are changing here in town. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's nice, Kathy. We're just getting a little color around here. It seems a little late, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. And I think even highlighted more so by the brilliant blue skies, which we haven't seen for most of the summer. And now as we head into early fall, we're starting to see that smoke and haze move out, allowing for things to kind of contrast. And we're seeing just the beautiful blue over the Continental Divide. Good travel weather, I-25 and I-70. Temperatures today above the average of 71. How about 74 currently in Denver? Almost 80 at DIA, 73 in Parker, 80 in the Longmont hour area. And this hour across the western U.S., we have temperatures starting to surge as high pressure becomes the dominant feature, not just for Colorado, but across much of the Great Basin. And with the storm track to the north, we should see light winds tonight and again tomorrow. And also winds out of the south will help to push temperatures even warmer as we move through Tuesday and Wednesday. There is a little bit of moisture coming into southern Colorado. We're tracking some isolated showers over the southern mountains, but pretty benign weather pattern for us over the next uh, 48 hours or so. And we're not looking at the threat of severe weather, no snow, over the higher terrain, just some beneficial rain on the western slope and across the southwest corner of the state. Cloud cover hard to come by as well, so fair sky, light winds heading into the dinner hour with temperatures in the mid 70s now dropping 10 degrees after sunset. And coming up in Maine weather after a beautiful fall evening, can we get another beautiful day tomorrow? I'm going to talk about that. We've got warm, dry weather to start the week, but there are some showers in the extended period. So Kim and Tom, I'm going to cover all that in Maine weather in just a few minutes. Of course you will.
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Of course well, we, I will. We'll take it. Because that's what I do. I know. That's right. We'll that's see it. you then. Thanks. Okay. So if you're a bike rider, this is good weather. Sure. And a cyclist from Connecticut is biking cross country to raise awareness about distracted driving. Nine News reporter Angeline McCall spoke with him during a pit stop in Boulder about the cause behind the ride. There are challenges every day, but um, you know, they, there's always something to look forward to. Weeks on a bike can be grueling and unpredictable. I'm making my way across the country to Seattle on a 10,000 mile trip overall. Ben Granis is resting for a couple days in Boulder after riding almost every day for two weeks. It's kind of an incredible mix of sensations and emotions. Um, I am really happy to be able to spread this message. A message to keep your eyes up. The message of ending distracted driving became more important as I had more miles on the road and, and realized how important it is to have distraction-free driving. Funds from the ride will go to Tax Less, Live More, a nonprofit started by the parents of an 18-year-old girl who was hit and killed by a distracted driver on a bike on the East Coast. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, more than 800 cyclists are killed every year by cars. It comes back to awareness and knowing that a text that you get while you're on the road means nothing in the scheme of things if it results in you know, a loss of life of someone on someone else on the road. So far, Ben has ridden 3,000 miles. I had just gone up Mount Greylock, uh, which is the highest point in Massachusetts. Documenting the memories and the miles. It's a really unique experience and something that I've never done before. There's still a long ways to go to complete the route with a reason. In Boulder, Angela McCall, 9 News. Ben has already raised $16,000 for his nonprofit. His goal is $50,000. And if you would like to give, we have a link on our website, 9news.com. Maybe someone who could use a hand. Absolutely. Be nice. Yeah, it's a good cause.